This is stop number much the political and the spiritual heart of this country. If you look diagonally ahead to the right, straight across Parliament Square, you're looking at the twin white stone towers which form the west face of Westminster Abbey, which is primarily a place of Christian worship. For the past 1,000 years, it's been the seat of coronation for this country's kings and queens. The first king to be crowned there was William the Conqueror, William Duke of Normandy. He was crowned there Christmas Day, 1066. Ahead of the left is this country's seat of government, Parliament. Once this bus moves on from here, John will be turning left. As soon as John turns left, if you look above your head to the right, you'll be looking at the clock tower at Parliament. And that's all it's called, just the clock tower at Parliament. It stands 96 metres high. You're not looking at Big Ben. Big Ben is simply the name of the 13 and a half ton bell, which is inside the clock tower. The bell was named after the Commissioner of Works at Parliament at one time, whose name was Sir Benjamin Hall. The clock tower at Parliament, that's all it's called. Just the clock tower at Parliament. It stands 96 metres high. Okay, folks, look immediately above your head to the right. That's the clock tower at Parliament. You cannot see Big Ben. It is the 13 and a half ton bell, which is inside the clock tower. This is Westminster Bridge. Below you is the River Thames, the reason why London exists. One possible meaning of the word Thames is dark river. Above your head to the left is the London Eye, the tallest observation wheel in the world. It stands 135 metres high, it weighs 1,500 tonnes. A ticket to go for a ride or a flight on the Eye will last for 30 minutes. From the top of the eye, on a clear day, you'll be able to see for 25 miles, about 40 kilometres. This is the stop for the London Eye, stop number 13 on the red tour. If you're in a hurry to take the river cruise, you can take the river cruise from the base of the London Eye. The cruise is operated by... It's not a good period in architecture anywhere in the world. It was a listed building. It had some... Uh, Technical features are considered innovative in the interior. Now, due to There's London Waterloo Station on the right there, from where you can get the Eurostar. London to Paris in only 2 hours and 15 minutes. You can also go from London to Brussels in 2 and a half hours. So when they finish the Crossrail channeling from uh, King's Cross, due for completion in 2008, it will take even less time. It'll take only an hour and a half. Our trains are on this side of the channel don't go as fast as the TGV, so the Grand Vitesse in French, they uh, go a lot faster than ours. Man, or Olivia and Ainsley, look over here. Hello. That's a good shot. Yeah. Come sit. What's in the background, guys? Yep. We went on that once. Pardon, Ollie? We went on it once. Yeah, we did. Okay. I'm very slow. <laughs> hear that? Yeah. That was very slow. Daddy, pull The London Eye Sword. That was old, nasty looking, is it? The London Eye? No, that old building they were talking about. From like 1960s.
is the largest single office complex for one uh, company in the world. We opened in uh, 1962 for British Dutch oil giant Shell. We voted the OJS building at the time. Even a slightly unfair, it's a far worthy for that time. London Railway Terminal is in the Victorian era, it's a past expense, it's also a lovely facade, it's in Victoria Station, it also kicks across the campus in North London, a magnificent building. lovely bars, restaurants and shops in the summer months. Entertainers there will, uh, food formers there will entertain for the crowds. Bless you. It's also the uh, Royal Opera House on Covent Garden, one of the finest venues in the world for opera and ballet. I don't think so, honey. Yeah. Because I'm really, really windswept. Anyway, um, and then back to the hotel. How far the trip is it? Not that far. Okay. We could always get off the of Tower Bridge. Well, we just go off Tower Bridge and take two up from there. What? Get up here? Yeah. Well, Fleet so Street. First, and of only a few made during her lifetime. It's also the, uh, the symbols of London there, Gog and Amok. He's not as, in as informed as the others. I think it's silly, it's silly he probably is, just don't know how to explain it in English. So, yeah, Rupert Murdoch was the first that uh, he moved the, the media magnet, he moved the Times newspaper part of his news corporation empire to uh, new to Docklands, uh, about three miles away new development there, to take advantage of new technology and rapidly reduce the headcount. All the other newspapers quickly followed suit. Until then, they were the press. Yeah, it's a lovely place. London. Then this next left here, uh, the building of the dome in the golden emblem on the old Bailey, the highest criminal court in the country, lots of high profile murder, uh, murder trials that they say. Ahead of us is a cathedral, can we pull that to the top, you can see the the rails of the dome are uh, on top of the dome there, but it's a mighty long way, there are no clicks. 
you do get to the top there, and uh, you are awarded like our today on Daylight Day with fabulous views for a couple of centuries with the highest vantage point in London. Are you filming? Yes. This is, oh. uh, so Charles and I were married in 1980. Tower Bridge coming. The man who defeated Napoleon. Uh, Waterloo and also uh, Lord Nelson. If you were on the Trafalgar Square, you would have seen his uh, the top of the column there. So this is stop number 17 here for St Paul's Cathedral. A red cross put on your door to ward others away. Down the street here on the left bow lane, you get a good idea of what a 17th century London street would look like. You might be familiar with the uh, children's nursery rhyme there. Uh, ring a ring a rose is a pocket full of posies. A tissue, a tissue, we all fall down. This has its origins from the plague. The ring of roses bring the red marks on your body. The first sy symptom you caught the dreaded disease. A pocket full of posies, these would have been the uh, herbs you wore around your neck. They attempt to stave off the disease. A tissue, a tissue, this refers to a chronic sneeze, not often a symptom. And the plague in your fall down needs no explanation. The only method of prevention was uh, fleeing the city. Most people didn't have the means to do so. Uh, it wasn't until the cooler months of uh, that winter, 1666, uh, uh, that wasn't bad enough for 17th century London, there was another disaster waiting around the corner for you, but I'll get to that very shortly. So now here in the heart of the city of London, is uh, the financial nerve centre of the country. It's a Monday that is a bank holiday, or, uh, what we call uh, public holidays here in Britain. So it's, uh, most people have got to do up work, so it's uh, pretty quiet. There's only 7,000 people living permanent residents in the city of London. Most of those are inside the Barbican Towers, so pretty quiet uh, on public holidays as well as weekends. This building here on the left here is number one poultry. This replaced a great uh, Victorian edifice, the Mackin and Webb building, the Jewelers. One critic of the plans was in the corner, that's the Bank of England. The Royal Exchange is at that building there ahead with the columns. That's where London's first stock exchange stood. So after the go back to the 17th century, after the plague of 1665, another disaster that fell under the year 1866. Anyone know who that is? Great fire. That's right, the Great Fire. Somebody knows their history there. So it started in a bakery not far from here. The system went to uh, Stoke. The, the coals of the flames. The fire realised it was out of control. Of course, the poor grand master Thomas Farriner, he couldn't pin it out either. Samuel Pepys is famous for writing a diary, a famous in London, amongst some London historians for a diary of the time. He wrote by Willis and Gelt of the fire. He wrote in at 2 a.m. by the size of the fire, which is too concerned. There were many fires in London then. He went back to sleep again. So he was already woken at uh, 6 a.m. So we went to our left into the uh, Great Monument Fire in London. He was found by the Great Monument Fire in London. He was found by the Great Monument Fire in London. He was found by the Great Monument Fire in London. He was found by the Great Monument Fire in London. He was found by the Great Monument Fire in London. He was found by the Great Monument Fire in London. He was found by the Great Monument Fire in London. He was found by the Great Monument Fire in London. To the left here we see uh, the Tower Bridge. This is the finest bridge in London, one of the finest bridges in the world. So down the famous uh, for its drawbridge that comes up and down to let vessels through.
So these are uh, dragons here on either side of the road. Then okay, we've left the city of London now. Mm -hmm. Power up of Southern. There's a uh, spike here. There would have been many spikes along the original London Bridge. The people's heads on the top. Freshly executed heads from the town would have been brought down, put on the top. Opened by the Queen in 2002. That's where the London Assembly, the local London government now meets, headed by the mayor. The one who is democratically elected, uh, Ken Livingston. He's very, uh, considered a great mayor. He brought in the congestion charge. Charged people to drive private cars coming into London. It's not in the fourth today, it's a public holiday. So if you're free to find such a cool London bridge. today, you won't get charged. Also, uh, also was uh, instrumental in the successful 2012 Olympic bid for London. So we're now going over Tower Bridge. This is, uh, took 14 years to complete. This completed in the year 1894. This is the last bridge going east. I don't know if it's going over east. Designed by Sir Norman Foster. That's the headquarters of the Swiss Re company, the uh, insurers of insurance companies. It's completed only a couple of years ago, 2003, so it's a very recent addition to the London skyline. On the right there, the tall building in the distance with the pyramid on the top, that is Canary Wharf. The tallest building 50 stories high. It's part of the Dockland development, a region of the Docklands, down in the early 1980s. Still not yet really complete, still a work in progress. There's uh, the Tower of London there on the left. This is uh, William the Conqueror, the first North King, but the first one Tower of the Centre. Known for its gruesome executions, two of them gave six wives were beheaded there. Folks, uh, welcome aboard the Millennium Sign for your trip uh, up to uh, Westminster. Uh, as we leave these bills, we have to give you a brief safety announcement. That's alarming anyway, so to let you know that the vessel you're on board is licensed to carry 500 passengers and uh, we do have life saving equipment on board uh, that support these numbers in the form of uh, life rings, life rafts and life jackets. We have jackets situated uh, in lockers in various parts of the vessel. Uh, points all clearly marked with the life jacket symbol, and uh, we're also in contact with the Portland Authority and the River Services for these ships right all the time. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the trip. What I can do for? Oh, that was cold. Right up my legs.